Hello friends, I hope that you've been well. In today's video, I will be reviewing the new RX Oros alcohol markers as well as working on some fan art portraits. The Art X marker set that I received has 90 colors and came in this really nice box with cute extra goodies inside, such as these stickers, a marker organizer, and a travel bag. Whenever I receive new art supplies, my first instinct is to swatch out all the colors. Thankfully, Art X readily provided a printout swatch sheet that has a template with all the color names labeled, which is incredibly useful. And since the markers weren't organized in any particular way, I tried to pick them out of the box by color family to try and help me swatch and organize them a little easier. So here you can see I'm picking out all the blues and greens and I had already done all the grayscale colors. Oftentimes with alcohol markers, many people voice concern about whether or not there will be enough pastel shades. But thankfully, as you'll see when I finish swatching all the colors, which I'll show you at the end here, this RX set has a really good amount of variety when it comes to dark, mid, and light tone values, which is especially handy when trying to create a good contrast in your illustrations. The markers perfectly fit into the carrying bag that comes with the set, which is great for storage and for on the go. Plus, because of the durable material of the bag, it will be resistant to water and I think will be really easy to clean as well. There's also two pockets inside, which I find will be really handy for keeping the swatch sheet on hand or any other loose items as well if you wanted to bring this on a trip or you want to travel around with it. And then lastly, it also comes with a shoulder slash crossbody strap that you can adjust and easily remove and add when need be. I really love the cute scalloped edging on the lids. It reminds me of clouds and I think it's such a really nice little detail and sweet touch. And as you can see, these are dual tipped markers, one end being a chisel nib and the other being a brush nib. So to start, the first character that I'll be working on here is Wanda Maximoff from the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the TV series WandaVision. I decided to go with the appearance that she has during the Halloween episode in the TV series when she's wearing a costume that I believe is a nod to her classic comic book attire. I went with this one because honestly, I just think it's a really fun design and for those of you who are already familiar with my process, you'll know that I pretty much always use a red erasable color pencil for my sketching. I find that it doesn't smudge nearly as much as a graphite pencil and it blends really nice with markers and other mediums when you start coloring. I do apologize that the sketch lines might be a little bit difficult to see. I don't often film my sketching process, this being one of the reasons, since I prefer to keep a light hand so that I can easily erase and redraw the piece however many times I need with minimal damage to the paper. Thankfully, even though I did erase tons of times and redrew things many times during this process, the Marker paper by Art X held up really well to all of the erasing and I had no issues with using the markers on top of it. So generally when I'm working on marker illustrations and marker portraits, I start out with the skin. So here you can see I am using a base tone color for the skin and I'm actually omitting certain areas to leave white, like the white of the paper. And this is something that I've been doing lately to create like a more dramatic lighting. And I find that it just looks more interesting and I think that it makes the piece feel more dynamic. And then next you can see I'm using a second shade here for the skin and I'm using it to create some depth and some shadows in the skin tone here. And then from there, I actually ended up going ahead and using a purple as well to create some cooler shadows for some even more dark areas. And I found that using the purple here for the shadows really creates more interest in the skin tone. 
then as if you are familiar with this particular character and this particular costume that she wears in the show, you'll know that there is a lot of red happening. She's got red hair and the costume is red. And so I wanted to make sure I was able to differentiate the red in her hair and the red in the costume. And so with the kind of right side of the costume here, I used an orangey red. And then on the left side, I used a kind of deeper, cooler red to create a differentiation in the two sides from the light and the dark. And then with the hair, I use the same orangey red that I used for part of the costume, but then I went ahead and actually used a brown to layer on top of it to create that more natural kind of ginger hair and also helps differentiate from the red of the costume. Of course, my color choices are still very bold and bright in comparison to realism or what you see in real life, but that's kind of the nature of the style that I prefer to go for is something that is somewhere in between realism and cartoon. And something that I really appreciated with the brush tip markers here is that you can get into really detailed areas like you saw with the eyebrows. And then after I've pretty much laid down all of the markers, I actually went ahead and used some color pencils on top to just create even more dimension and to create a little bit of texture. And this is a process that I've been doing for quite a while. And then for the line art, I actually went ahead and used a paintbrush and some acrylic ink so that I could use some colored line art, which I think really helped tie the portrait together. Something that I actually didn't test it beforehand doing in doing this these portraits was I actually didn't double check to see if the acrylic ink would even work on this paper, but surprisingly it actually held up perfectly fine and went on really, really nicely. And what's really nice about using marker paper is that it's super, super smooth. And so working with this paintbrush on top of it was pretty seamless. And despite it being very smooth, the colored pencils as well actually worked really nicely on it too. Next up, we have our girl Katara from the animated television series, Avatar The Last Airbender. I'm sure many of you know that this is probably one of my favorite series of all time. And I'm kind of surprised that it's taken me so long to draw Katara. I've technically drawn her once before many, many years ago, but this is only the second time I've actually drawn her, which I'm kind of surprised by. So here you can see I am kind of blocking in her the first base layer of the skin in sections. This is something that I try to do even when the area doesn't have any obvious sections like with the neck where it's sectioned off by the necklace. So as you saw, I was actually kind of going around the nose and things like that. And I find that kind of helps to fill in larger areas that are a little bit more complicated, like trying to go around the eyes and the mouth. And then here you can see when I fill in large areas, I also often like to do an outline around the shape first and then fill it in that way. And I find that helps create cleaner edges, at least as clean as I possibly can. And something that I think is worth mentioning as well is that these markers layer on top of each other really well and it never bled through to the next page, which I think was pretty impressive since I did quite a few layers, especially on that Wanda portrait. So of course you can usually use a darker color to create the shading as I did with the skin, but you can also use the same color a second time to create depth in the areas that you want it to. So with Katara's hair, I believe I actually used the same marker for both the first layer and the second layer to create the shading. And what's really nice about using a brush tip, as you can see with the shading in the shine and the hair, you can kind of create really nice tapered brush strokes by having like a flick of the wrist. And then again, using the brush tip for the eyebrows, very, very versatile. I definitely think that if you don't own brush markers and you are interested in investing in alcohol markers, I think that brush markers are definitely the way to go in comparison to a chisel or a fine nib. I just think it's much more versatile, especially for 
portraits in doing those little wispy areas in the hair. I own a lot of different markers and whenever I use any alcohol markers that have the fine tip and the chisel nib on each end, I just find that it sort of interrupts the flow of the process when you have to switch back and forth between both ends. Obviously, this these brush markers have that chisel end on the on the other side, which is handy when you need it, but it's much more streamlined to be able to just use a brush nib throughout the entire process, which is what happened with these portraits, which is definitely more efficient. Then for our third portrait here, we have Hades from the webcomic Lore Olympus. And as you probably might know, if you've been with my channel for a while, I really enjoy coloring people and portraits that have unusual skin tones. So Hades was the perfect choice for this exercise. I do think that I probably could have pushed the nose a little bit further. For those of you who are familiar with the character, you'll know that his nose is quite long and pointed and very exaggerated. Obviously my style doesn't really lend itself to that kind of exaggeration, but I do think that I could have pushed it a little further. And if I were to draw him again, I would probably try and find a way to make it a little bit more prominent. In any case, as you can see here, I'm using the same kind of approach that I did with Wanda by leaving white areas on the skin to create that really bright, highlight coming through this time from the left side and I really think that markers are a very versatile medium in the sense that you can bring them on the go and not have to worry about you know a paintbrush and water and mixing your own colors here you can see I went ahead and used the same color twice on his skin to create kind of those subtle shadows and then I actually went ahead and tried a couple different colors that you can see on little swatches above the portrait to try and determine which color I thought would be more suitable for the deeper shading. Uh, first I tried a darker blue and then I tried the purple and as you can see I went ahead with the purple which I, cr I think creates just more visual interest in the shadows. And kind of in the same vein of creating just more interest in the color selection, he obviously typically wears like a black suit, but I decided to use a dark blue as the base instead to try and have it tie in nicely with the very blue color palette of the rest of his character design. And then I used a very dark gray to deepen the shading on the suit and the eyes and the eyebrows. And I think that, again, it just creates a little bit more of an interesting color shift rather than just using black or just using gray. And similarly to that, instead of using a black for the line art, I went ahead and used a dark blue ink. And I think that really helped tie everything together. Also, for those of you who are wondering, Hermes and Hecate, Hikate, apologies for the pronunciation. Everyone has a different version of it, it seems. Um, but those are my two favorite characters from Lore Olympus. Hermes is just a ray of sunshine, but I also appreciate that he's kind of got a darker side to him, which I hope we see more of. And then Hecate is just badass and I cannot resist a woman in a suit. <laughs> And next in today's itinerary, best boy Hitoshi Shinso from the anime and manga My Hero Academia. With Shinso, his default expression is quite removed and apathetic looking, almost sleepy like Aizawa, like teacher, like student. <laughs> so I definitely wanted to make sure I conveyed that in the way that I drew his features because I think that's definitely a huge um, point in his character is that he's sort of this very indifferent in his expression, but deep down he actually cares a lot. <laughs> Drawing his hair and his expression was actually super, super fun. I remembered a while back drawing Midoriya and having a really hard time getting his cur like slightly curly hair correct, but I don't know if maybe I've just gotten 
better at this sort of type of hair or maybe Shinso's is just a little bit easier to do, but I had so much fun shading and coloring it. The only thing that I think I had trouble with with Shinso is definitely his voice modifier mask thing. I definitely did not draw this thing correctly whatsoever. I just sort of made it up and I think that Thankfully, it's black and so you don't really get to see or need to see all the little details and the mechanics of it. So I just sort of added random textures and highlights to give the impression of this mechanism. I've been a fan of the series now for a couple of years and I initially started out just watching the anime but then I got impatient to wait for each season so I went ahead and read the manga as well and when I had arrived at the arc when Shinso makes a return to try to get into the hero course he immediately became one of my favorite characters and I will say Katsuki Bakugo is still my number one favorite character, but Shinso is definitely now a close second, despite being a fairly small character in the grand scheme of the series. And if you're fairly up to date with the manga, you know that things be getting pretty crazy and I'm not really sure if we're going to see much more of Shinso but I really hope we do in some kind of capacity because I really do like his character a lot. But in any case, needless to say, I had been really anticipating when we would get to finally see his arc animated. And so, of course, I am loving season five so far. I really enjoy the this arc because of Shinso, but also just seeing the two class class A and class B interacting with each other. I just think it's really fun. And it is kind of the last arc that we get to see them having fun in school, basically. Like, things gonna get crazy after that. But yeah, I was very, very happy to see Shinso get moments in the opening as well. I just, yeah, I really love an underdog and I think it's so interesting to see a character like Shinso who has a power that most had deemed to be suitable for a villain or had assumed that he would turn out to be bad because of this power, but he ended up being someone who actively chooses to fight tooth and nail to not only prove people wrong, but to be a hero and use his power to help people instead. And I just, I can't, can't get enough of it. And second to last portrait, we've got another anime slash manga character, my man's Kento Nanami from Jujutsu Kaisen. Similar to My Hero Academia, I initially started the series watching the anime, but got so wrapped up in it and couldn't resist reading the manga as well because I just needed to know what happened next. I'm not fully up to date on the manga just yet, and I still really want to read the prequel manga as well, but so far I'm absolutely loving the series and I cannot wait to see season two. For quite a while, I was fully convinced that Nanami's hair was like a pukey green, but after seeing people's fan art of him and double checking his character description, I realized that his hair is actually like a dirty blonde and that the green in his sunglasses sort of just played tricks on my eyes to make it seem like his hair reads more green. And when I first watched this series, I had assumed that Nanami was older than Satoru Gojo, but after reading the manga, it turns out Nanami is actually younger than Gojo. Like, what? <laughs> I was so confused. Uh, I guess actually, you know, having to deal with curses and Gojo's one brain cell just makes his face look permanently fatigued. <laughs> Joking aside though, Gojo actually is my favorite character. I enjoy his silly but super confident attitude and the way that he interacts with everyone is just wildly entertaining. I think Megumi Fujiguro might be my second favorite character and then Nanami might be a close third. But yeah, the reason why I chose to draw Nanami in this lineup instead of Gojo or Megumi is because I wanted to try and hit as wide a variety of character designs since Hades has white hair and I didn't want Gojo's white hair in the mix. And then similarly with Sojun, who is the last portrait who has black hair, I didn't want to have Megumi's black hair clashing with him. 
I almost drew Maki Zenin, who is a badass gal with dark green hair, and I love her too. But sometimes you're just in the mood to draw handsome fictional men, and so I just followed my heart's true desire. <laughs> I'm actually re-watching the show right now because I love it, and I just finished the episode where we get to see all the female characters battle each other out in the sister school exchange event, and it just brings me so much joy to see more and more shonen series really give the female characters more moments to shine. Like, not only were they super badass and the animation of all the fight, fight sequences, not just the, the female characters, but all the animation on this series is so good and so dynamic. But I also really appreciated that we got we get to see like backstories from the characters as well, because I feel like that really helps like round them out and flesh out the characters and just make them more compelling. So really, really love that for them. And last but certainly not least, we have the love of my life, Sojun Han from the webcomic True Beauty. Also, I apologize if I'm pronouncing his name wrong. I've only read the comic and I have not seen the K-drama, so I'm just guessing. And if you've been with me for a while, I am notorious for pronouncing things wrong. Anyway, I think this is perhaps an unpopular opinion, but Sojun is by far my favorite character in this series, and honestly, at this point, I'm mainly reading it for him. Now, before anyone freaks out, I have nothing against Suho, he's fine, but in my personal opinion, I feel as though Sojun has had the most fleshed, he's the most fleshed out character and has had the most character growth thus far. When I initially began the series, I had deeply related to Jug Young, our main protagonist. For those of you who have not read the comic, she is someone who perceives herself to be unattractive and thus has a very low self-esteem. And she finds that, you know, her niche interests just she can't relate to other people. And so she feels very isolated. But through the power of makeup and being able to transform her face, she's able to be more confident and thus, you know, try to live a fuller life. Obviously, there's more to the story, but that's just a brief introduction. In any case, I definitely was in that position, especially in high school, so I really understood where she was coming from. However, as we've moved through the story, I feel as though she's become quite stagnant and passive, which I'm hoping changes as we continue, but... Anyway, that brings us to why Sojin is my favorite, because he is, while certainly flawed, that's what makes him so compelling. He's extremely passionate, but almost to a fault sometimes, where he can be aggressive and acts before he thinks things through. But through the co course of the series, he continues to reflect and tries to improve upon his faults. But his passionate personality also means he's fiercely loyal and very hardworking. He's a very proactive character in the choices that he makes with both his career and his personal life, which I really appreciate. In a lot of ways, his character actually reminds me of Zuko in Avatar in the sense that their fiery personalities can be both a blessing and a curse, and they're just trying to tame those flames. <laughs> Y'all like my cheesy analogy? <laughs> I don't want to give away any major spoilers, but there's a scene when Sojun is at a low point and he expresses how even though he's essentially achieved his dream, gained all the success and adoring fans, despite all this, he feels hollow and empty. And that moment just broke my heart into a million pieces because I just I really felt for him and I feel like I personally have been kind of going through that lately as well. So whether it's with or without the main love interest, I just want my sweet boy to get the happy ending he deserves. Honestly, I probably will not rest until he does. So that's kind of what has been keeping me on my toes with reading this series. <laughs> also on a slightly unrelated note, Sojun does have the best fashions and accessories throughout this entire series. I don't stand by every single thing he wears. I personally am not a fan of bucket hats and he does wear those a lot, but for the most part, his fashions be on point and he is also impossibly beautiful. And so I love 
looking at him. I love in drawing him and you'll probably see more fan art of him from me in the future because I just really enjoy drawing him. If you're interested in grabbing your own set of these Art X markers, follow the link that I have in the description down below and you will be able to apply the 10% off coupon code. Anyways, that concludes today's video. I hope that some of the advice that I provided about alcohol markers was helpful for you, or at the very least, I hope that you had fun having me keep you company while I gushed about these characters and these series. So let me know in the comments any thoughts and feelings about any of these fandoms, or if you have tried out these art Oros markers yourself yet, and if you did have them, what types of things or characters would you draw? Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.